One of the classic character archetypes in RPGs is the blonde Lady Knight character, of which Catalina seems to belong. While likely intended to be a tankier character with supportive abilities, she can also do a pretty high amount of damage. Catalina is a character all about resource management to get the most out of her kit, since if you can effectively take advantage of your Ares gauge, you can get a lot of benefit and damage out of the character. But if you can't, you'll likely find her to be one of the weakest characters in the entire game, making her a character with a higher risk-reward than average, especially if you try to lean more into your offensive capabilities. That said, she does have a lot of cool tech and ways to maintain her Ares gauge as long as possible, and understanding how to do this will be one of the major keys to playing her effectively. Catalina has been one of the more highly requested videos, so I am happy that I was finally able to get to this, and in this video I do want to discuss Catalina, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. If you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. Starting things off with the basics, Catalina is a character defined by her Ares gauge. Her two support skills are very tied to this mechanic as well, where you can summon Ares when this gauge is full by using a combo finisher, link attack, or a skill, and when Ares is summoned, your skills and Skybound Arts will be enhanced. And you will also be able to perform the special combo Pack Strike, which does a lot of damage. As mentioned, Ares will drastically increase both your damage and capabilities, and as such as Catalina, you want to be taking advantage of Ares as much as possible. As such, the most important things you can do as a Catalina player is filling and maintaining your Ares gauge, which is what the bulk of this section is going to be focused on. So the main way to fill the Ares gauge is going to be performing combo finishers, of which Catalina has a lot. By using X into Y or one normal attack into a finisher, you can fill the Ares gauge just slightly. This is good if you need to fill the gauge just a little bit to get full Ares and want to get there as fast as possible. By using two normal attacks into a finisher, you can fill the gauge about a quarter of the way, and by using three normal attacks into a finisher, or by using your three normal attacks into a flurry into a finisher, you can fill the gauge almost halfway at once. You can also press Y over and over, but this combo is not really recommended in my opinion, since it feels slower and doesn't fill the gauge that much. Now the gauge is kind of cut off at the halfway mark, where you cannot overfill past this halfway mark, so if you use a stronger combo finisher that fills the gauge more, when the gauge is almost at this halfway mark, it will still stop at this halfway mark. This basically means that you will need to fill the gauge in four different ways no matter what to ensure full Ares gauge, since it's impossible to fill the gauge by more than half by any one attack, and it will always be cut off by this threshold. And naturally, you get the full gauge, being at 99% doesn't matter either, so you're going to need that last little bit as well. This does give some benefit into the standard X into Y combo that fills the gauge just slightly as a way to reach these thresholds quickly if that is your best option. A link attack will also fill the gauge by well over a quarter of the gauge as well, making it a good option to use in many situations, and performing combo finishers after skills will do your strongest combo finisher and fill almost half the gauge in that situation as well, making these good options if you need to get Ares back as fast as possible, as long as you weave it into the proper windows. You can also do the skill cancel tech popularized by Percival, where you activate a skill, immediately dodge out of it before the skill comes out, and go into your combo finisher as a way to get gauge even faster if needed, but usually you don't have to rely on this method, but it can be an option and a good way to get gauge faster while preserving your skill cooldowns if needed. And then the final way to build gauge is just by using one of her skills that immediately fills it and summons Ares, which is the easiest and ideally what you can rely on in a lot of fights when the gauge does go down and when you lose it. Learning how the gauge works and the fastest way to build the gauge is key, but usually it's using a mix of combo C finishers or skill finishers into combo A finishers to get the extra bit is going to be one of the best and easiest ways to accomplish this quickly. Now what's more important is maintaining Ares and the Ares gauge. So while Ares is active, you get a big boost to your damage and skills and get the ability to perform the Ares pack strike by repeatedly pressing the Y button, which is basically a new combo that does a lot of damage. So as mentioned, when the gauge is full, you can summon Ares by using any skill, a combo finisher, a link attack, or a skybound art. Once Ares is summoned, it will disappear if you do not input something that will maintain Ares, meaning you will only get the benefit of Ares for that one ability if you do not try to keep it up. So the ways of maintaining Ares are using a skill, using a combo finisher, using Ares pack strike, using a link attack, and using a skybound art. This means that in order to maintain and keep Ares active, you want to be chaining these inputs together as much as possible and as many in a row as you can to keep Ares active and prevent it from disappearing and resetting. This usually means chaining off of a skill you have used into a combo finisher, which will immediately chain into an Ares pack strike, and using this until you see the animation where you jump in the air and attack and slam back down, and after that Ares pack strike is finished, and you're going to want to immediately chain from this Ares pack strike into another damaging skill or link attack, 
So you can change this, chain this back into another combo finisher, and once again into your Ares Pack Strike once again. This is basically your bread and butter way of maintaining Ares, of using a skill, using a combo finisher, using Pack Strike, and repeating. Throwing in Link Attacks when available, since they can also refresh or allow you to continue Pack Strike. Pack Strike cannot be chained into itself, and utility skills cannot be trained into Pack Strike in this way either, meaning you need damaging skills to make the most benefit out of this. If you do use utility abilities, it needs to be followed up with something offensive to keep this chain going. This isn't too difficult to do in a vacuum, but it can be very easy to get interrupted by basically anything. Even dodging can lose Ares if you were in the middle of a combo, and being knocked back or anything like that can cause you to lose Ares. This can make maintenance very tricky, and sometimes you have to choose your windows or change your setup around to maintain Ares uptime as much as possible. The ideal Catalina gameplay loop will be keeping Ares up as much as you can by continuously chaining inputs together that keep Ares active, usually skills into combo finishers into pack strike, as I said, which means pressing the Y button a lot, and repeating while understanding the ways to build the Ares gauge during downtime sections of fights since you will not be able to keep it up 100% of the time no matter what. But limiting this downtime is important and one of the things that you can minimize when you are playing the character. This also makes her setup and skills more important to maximizing her damage and utility, and understanding how to use these is important as well. But we'll discuss everything else in other sections. Let's get into setup for now. So my setup this time around is a mix of a lot of really good traits. I do not think this is the absolute most optimal thing you can possibly have, and we'll discuss that. But I do think it is a mix of a lot of really good things that makes the character work really well with the sigils that I currently have access to. The weapon itself is just the Catastrophe weapon, the Terminus weapon, I should say, that has the Catastrophe bonus effect. You get a 50% additional attack, damage cap plus 100% when you're below 45,000 health, the best effect in the game. Sigil boost is a great effect to have as well when you max out the weapon to give all your sigils a little bit of an extra boost. Also, if you don't have this crewway weapon, the max ascended weapon are also pretty good options to consider. Guardian's Conviction is going to be the main skill you're going to want to use here as far as her unique sigils. This one is absolutely incredible. Basically, every time Ares is active, you get even more benefit out of it. You get more supplementary damage on all of your effects, 10% additional damage on everything that you deal, and a damage cap plus 15% as well to do even more damage while Ares is active, meaning you get even more benefit out of keeping Ares up, which means that you want to try to keep Ares up as much as you can. My Blood Gang, I almost forgot to mention the Imbued Traits. I have Skilled Assault here, one of Catalina's skills has a very high damage cap, so even having this with some of the other damage boosters still gets some benefit out of this, so that is just kind of the reason that I have that as one of the imbued traits for that. Blight Resistance is kind of a filler skill, but there is a lot of late game enemies with Blight, and Critical Hit Rate is just to reach as much Critical Hit Rate as I can. My Overmasteries don't allow me to hit 100%, with uh, even with two Critical Hit Rate 5 pluses right now, and I don't really feel like grinding for something better, so that's just kind of where I am right now with only 95% Critical Hit Rate, but ideally you'll hit that 100% value, and the uh, Critical Hit Imbue will help you do that. The sub-trait that I have on Guardian's Conviction is Combo Booster. Now, like I said, Catalina has a, some some of her moves have a hard damage cap to hit. A lot of Catalina players run three or even four damage boosters at time, and Combo Booster is one of the main effects on that, just because you get a lot of attacks out with Ares active especially, and you're going to be wanting to chain those attacks together as much as possible when Ares is out anyway. I mean, you can very easily hit this maximum of 72% and get a lot of benefit out of this, and that being the sub-trait on my uh, unique sigil here makes it a really good way to fit this into the build and one of the absolute best damage boosters you can run on Catalina. As far as other damage boosters, I got the two critical hit rates here, which have Stamina and Tyranny on them, two other very, very good universal damage boosters. Now, if you only want to run these three damage boosters, Stamina, Tyranny, Combo Booster, that is completely fine. You will still get a lot of benefit out of the character. You'll still be capping a lot of your normal attacks. Just some of your skills are going to be a little bit harder to cap, especially your uh, main damaging skill you're going to be using a lot, but you'll probably still get a lot of benefit, the most of the benefit out of this, but a lot of Catalina players do recommend running... Uh, many damage boosters just because it is hard to hit some of those caps. Stamina gives 51% boost to 100% health. You should be at that most of the time in most combat situations, and Tyranny just gives 36% boost pretty much universally at the cost of 20% of your health, which is really nice to have. And then I got my obligatory 4 damage cap 5 pluses. This is uh, really nice to have just to uh, make sure we're doing as much damage as possible, hitting the absolute maximum damage we possibly can. I've got quick cooldown on one of these. Cooldown reduction is extremely good on Catalina because uh, you want to have your cooldowns up as much as possible so you can chain all your attacks together and keep Ares active more often. And it also allows lower skill cooldown on that skill that uh, summons Ares instantly, so when you do lose Ares, you have uh, more uptime on Ares anyway just from having that skill up more often. So really good to have quick cooldown in that case as well. Now, speaking of quick cooldown, the other unique sigil that Catalina has offers some cooldown reduction, but Catalina players and... Do not recommend running it because it's only 5% and it's not actually that good of an ability. It doesn't really have that much benefit compared to even Quick Cooldown or Cascade. 
So that is why Catalina players do not really recommend running it and why I'm not running it on this build either. I also did not really notice many positive benefits with it. And with the current amount of cooldown reduction the build has, you should be fine in most situations for chaining areas as infinitely as you possibly can in most situations. If you can somehow conveniently fit it on the build and you don't need any other sub traits, it could be an option to consider, but it, right now it is not a very good unique sigil to consider running. The other sub traits I have in my damage caps are Cascade. Once again, this is a really good effect to have. Just one level of this or one sigil of this gives 1.6% cooldown reduction. Well, based on the types of attack you deal, but just having one level is almost maxed out, so that's really nice to have. Uh, I have Steel Nerves. This is to go along with the Stout Heart that I have. I am running Stout Heart on this character because, uh, like I mentioned before, any kind of interruption will immediately cancel Ares, even dodging or something like that. So just kind of being able to tank through attacks and... Uh, not take as much damage is probably going to be better in most situations in this specific case. Taking less damage and uh, still being able to continue your combo and keep Ares active is going to give you more benefit in the long run here. That is why I kind of like running the Stout Heart on this character, because I do think there is a lot of benefit out of that. And uh, just keeping Ares uptime is more important than anything else for me. Potion Hoarder helps with this as well. You're going to need more healing if you're tanking more attacks, so you want to kind of keep the uh, potions running and uh, keep your health up as well with this, especially since you have Stamina or stamina as a sub-trait. Now, because of this... I can only really conveniently fit one supplementary damage 5 into my build. Now, this only gives 42%, I believe, with only one of these, which is not ideal. You do lose some DPS here compared to being able to run two or even three of these, but I didn't really have a way to uh, conveniently fit more into my build if, unless I wanted to give up some more like important sub-traits like Quick Cooldown or something like that. So I'm only running one right now. I still get 42% chance to deal that 20% additional damage. It does stack. It does stack with Guardian Conviction, so if it does trigger, that is nice at the very least, but... uh. I am losing a little bit of damage because of that, but I do think the utility it offers and the ability to have more Ares uptime is more beneficial in the long run in most fights. Then I have my obligatory War Elemental. This is just a straight bypass of the damage cap, 20% damage boost. Absolutely make sure you are running this on pretty much every character. It's just so, so beneficial as a sigil. Very, very strong effect to have. All of your attacks do a lot more damage. And then I have uh, Link Together 5+, plus and Aegis 5+. plus. These both come with Quick Cooldown to max out my cooldown reduction on Quick Cooldown. The minus 20% there is really nice to have. He just gives me more maximum health, so I can tank attacks a lot easier. Gives me up to that 41 41k threshold, just about. And Link Together is just a really nice effect in general for Catalina for the support abilities, and because Link attacks are actually pretty good for her, just because you get more Ares gauge out of it, you get to build up to Link Time. Link Time is pretty beneficial for Catalina in general for Ares as well, so that's pretty nice to have. You also get more SBA damage as well, and uh, more Chain Burst damage. So there's a lot of benefits out of Link Together. I do like this as an effect to run in most situations. So this is kind of the setup I'm running right now. Like I said, you could replace Stout Heart with more supplementary damage if you really don't think you need Stout Heart. You could probably replace Link Together as well if you have a supplementary damage 5 plus with a good sub trait or something like that. But I do like the set that I'm running right now. I do think it is pretty beneficial for both tankiness and just getting the most benefit out of Ares as possible. So let's take a look at skills now. My current skill set is more offensive, but there is some benefit to some of her utility skills as well. So first up, we have Frozen Blade. I do recommend running this pretty much at all time because it is a very short cooldown that you can use multiple times, and it's one of the main things that allows you to maintain areas a lot easier because it's just such a quick spell. You're able to immediately chain into your combo finishers with this, and uh, if you're attacking with areas, it also does a lot more damage as well. Next up, we have Enchanted Lands. This is probably going to be her best skill in general. This ability has a very high damage cap on it. It's one of the things you're going to be wanting to stack the damage boosters with the damage cap on. And especially when Ares is active, this can do a lot of damage. So this is one of your best skills. It also acts as an effective gap closer. And it also has a pretty short cooldown, making it one of the best skills that you have. It chains into your combo finishers, does a lot of damage with Ares. Run this pretty much at all times. Azure Sword is probably going to be your other mostly required ability here. This is the one that immediately summons Ares. The cooldown is long, but the fact that you can immediately get Ares when you use this ability makes it pretty much a required skill. It's one of those skills that you're probably going to be holding the cooldown of if you do have Ares active already, just because uh, you're going to want to save it for when you lose Ares, so you can kind of immediately get Ares back in a situation uh, after like a boss downtime section or after a boss's special attack or something like that. But this is definitely a 100% recommended skill to run because you're going to want to be using this pretty much all the time to activate Ares, especially at the start of fights and especially after downtime seconds so you can immediately get back into Ares without having to do any combo finishers or waste time trying to get it back. Winter's Rain, this is probably the best if you want to go maximum Catalina DPS. This is just a multi-hit attack, does a lot of stun. It also can chain into your combo finishers, also keeps Ares active. Just a pretty good attacking move in general as just uh, one of your other abilities. As far as her other four skills, these are kind of situationally useful. Heal, you probably do not need to run at all, though, because most people are going to have Potion Hoarder and abilities to heal themselves, but this is just kind of a heal ability. It's very straightforward. 
If you think you need heal, I guess it could be something to consider. Then we have Sacred Winds. Now, Glaciate is one of the best effects in the entire game, although Catalina's Glaciate is not as good as Lancelot's because it's kind of awkward to use, but it could be useful in certain situations depending on the boss fight and depending on team setup. Glaciate is still really broken if you're able to actually take advantage of it, and being able to prolong the effect and uh, kind of stop enemies in the track is really nice, but it kind of acts as a circle AoE, so you have to be kind of close to the enemy and in a specific spot to get the most benefit out of it. But Glaciate is still really, really good. Actions can't be performed by enemies. Could be good depending on the situation. Light Wall. This is a pretty good utility ability. Um, a friend of mine has used this in matches where we were doing Proto Baja originally, and we really like this during the Crystal Downtime section, so we could just kind of ignore mechanics and just kind of easily make sure we were to get through that. But naturally, with the skill level increased and uh, equipment level increased, you don't really have to worry about that at all. But at the very least, having invincibility to the entire party while Ares is active is just really nice to have as an effect. And uh, just having invincibility while being able to move around and attack is pretty nice, um, especially during very tricky or really strong attacks. I could see this being a lot more useful when the Lucilius raid comes out, especially if there's a section that's just really, really brutal. So this is something to keep in mind, a good skill to have, maybe something you could definitely replace uh, Winter's Reign with. And then finally, we have Emerald Shield. This is just a defense and Stout Heart buff to Catalina. This is a way you can get Stout Heart without the uh, Sigil effect, but it requires using a skill slot, and uh, it's a utility ability, so you can't actually chain into your combo finishers or keep Ares up time with this as easily. So that is something to keep in mind, but the defense buff and Stout Heart can be pretty nice, and uh, if you're able to grant it to the entire party, that can be pretty nice as well if Ares is active. So that's another nice utility ability. If you want to run, want to run Catalina as a more tanky, supportive set, this is a good ability to consider at the very least. So she has a lot of good skills, although if you want to run more maximum damage, I do recommend this setup. But Light Wall can be useful depending on the situation. Let's take a look at Overmasteries really quickly before we get into gameplay. So my Overmasteries are definitely not the best here, but I did get a nice roll of skill damage up, which is actually pretty good on her to make sure you're capping out and getting as much damage as you can out of Enchanted Land since it has a really high cap. Skill damage cap up 20% is also nice as well, and the normal cap up 12% is still pretty nice. I also got a Skybound Art Damage cap up roll here, so these are not bad Overmasteries, it just doesn't have crit rate, which is the kind of the main thing it's missing here, which is why I'm only at 95% critical hit rate. Critical hit rate is still one of the best Overmasteries you can get, so something you should probably be looking for most of the time, but these are still pretty four pretty good traits to consider on Catalina, and uh, something pretty worth having on her. Stun damage could be good, good as well, but otherwise these are probably going to be kind of the main kind of six things you ever want to look for. Normal cap up, skill damage cap up, skill damage up for Enchanted Lands, Critical hit rate up, Skybound Art damage cap up, stun power. Same kind of things you would expect on most characters. I think that's going to cover it for our general setup, so let's get into actual gameplay now. This has been kind of a long-winded, so I do apologize, but here is your spoiler warning if you are worried about post-game raid spoilers or anything like that. Let's get into it. So as you may expect, the general strategy in a lot of these fights is going to be using Azure Sword instantly to immediately summon Ares and then just trying to keep Ares up time as much as possible. Even if that means ignoring damage thanks to Stout Heart or anything like that, that's going to be my primary goal here most of the time. I'm going to be using uh, Enchanted Lance pretty early on as well, just because of the high damage that that offers. I'm going to be using Link Attacks when that's available as well. And then just using as many Ares Pack Strikes as I can, and then uh, afterwards using my uh, arts to, uh, or skills, sorry, to continue my uptime. Even if I get hit here, it doesn't matter, because I'm able to Stout Heart through it and kind of damage immune through it and keep attacking here. So that is going to be one of the major benefits of having that Stout Heart Sigil equipped. I don't have to worry about Ares getting interrupted or losing it at all until this part. So that Wind Box does make me lose uh, my abilities, unfortunately, and that is one of the uh, things you have to worry about with Catalina here. So I just should go ahead. I was going to just kind of wait, but uh, since Veins pops this bubble, I go ahead and I uh, go ahead and recharge my Ares gauge here. So I figure, why not? And then once I get it charged, I'm going to hold on to it, because I don't want to use it during the section where I don't do a ton of damage to him. So I hold on to Ares here until we can do more actual effective damage to him, since uh, at this point we're at a point where you know, we don't really do that much. And now that he's out of that special attack, I'm going to immediately summon Ares again and go back into like spamming my combo finishers. Uh, wind boxes can be a little annoying, and when, especially when you get in a situation like this, when uh, I lost Ares there because I had to dodge an attack there. But fortunately, Azure Sword was back off cooldown again, and that is one of the benefits of Azure Sword. You can immediately summon it Ares back when that is off cooldown, and I can immediately go back into my Ares and Pack Strikes combo finishers again. And from here, it's just kind of the same combination. Use a skill, use a combo finisher, use Ares Pack Strike, use another skill, use another combo finisher, use another Ares Pack Strike. Keep Ares up as much as possible to get as much damage and benefit out of Ares as I possibly can here. So... 
we kind of got him in a good spot now where we can kind of stun lock him at this point, and uh, the fight shouldn't be too difficult from here. So, I did lose Ares a few times in this fight, but thanks to uh, being able to get him back pretty easily during that one downtime section and having Azure Sword the other time, I was still able to maintain most uptime on Ares that I possibly could. Now, after using my SBA, I'm going to immediately chain into another skill because you can't chain into Pack Strike out of SBA. So you want to make sure that you are chaining into another skill to keep Ares up afterwards if you are using uh, your Ares with an SBA here like this. So at this point, he is at 14%. Uh, Gonna jump to the middle soon, most likely. Uh, we get a, Actually, no, we get a break, so we can just kind of end the fight here, looks like, and uh, have basically no issues. Link time is also up. Like I said, if Link time does activate, we don't have enough time here for really show it off, but I think you get infinite Ares during that, and... Uh, it makes it very easy to maintain Ares during that section as well without having to worry about doing all these skill cancels. But even then, during a, during a Link time, you'd probably want to be spamming Enchanted Lance as much as possible because of the high damage cap on that. And just general useful damage that it offers when you have that available. So, that's just kind of a general fight, how you would do this in this kind of situation. I'm going to show off one more, but I'm not going to show off the full fight because the video is kind of already long already. But, uh, same general principles apply. We're going to look at a Nilhilla, Malagmur, the wolf. And, uh... Same kind of strategy. I'm going to dodge out of the way first, and then activate uh, Azure Sword, pop Ares, and then immediately go into my combos. Make sure that I am positioning myself kind of in a way where I'm not taking too much damage, even though I have Stout Heart, but I am going to be taking some damage just because uh, that's just kind of the name of the game here to maintain Ares uptime and keep attacking with Ares active. So this enemy likes moving around a lot. I am able to uh, keep Ares uptime there. So that's nice at the very least. I heal, make sure I heal myself when I do take damage, so I am not, not low on health, so even though that I am kind of just face tanking a lot of damage here, thanks to the Steel Nerves, thanks to Stout Heart, thanks to my potions, I'm in a good situation regardless here. And we already kind of get him to this uh, threshold where we're at 62%, already broken, and uh, yeah, just the sheer amount of damage thanks to keeping Ares up time is able to kind of make short work of a lot of these fights. Now, that is not to say that it will always go this smoothly. Now, obviously he activates Nox Eterna here. And uh, I'm going to lose Ares in this fight. There's there's no there's no way I'm going to not be able to keep Ares during this section. But what luckily Azure Sword is still off cooldown, is going to be coming off cooldown during this section. And, and immediately after this, I'm going to be able to activate that and immediately go back into Ares uptime without even having to worry about the combo finishers here. So just kind of maintaining and keeping your Azure Sword when uh for these sections can be really nice. So you're able to immediately go back into that attack afterwards. All in all, I would not say your gameplay loop is too super difficult. It's not too hard to maintain Ares uptime. It can just be a little bit tricky sometimes if you're in a situation where you're unable to uh, use your abilities as effectively. I don't get glaciated there. It doesn't really matter because I'm behind the crystal anyway. So the fight's pretty easy. But, uh, yep, as your sword's up, I can immediately activate this again. He does end up getting this attack off again, which takes a while, and it's just kind of the same thing afterwards. So I'm going to kind of cut the fight when we get to that point. But uh, I just use Azure Sword into my uh, Enchanted Lands and just go into Pack Strike again and just kind of go into spamming all of my damage again. The gameplay loop is not that hard, as I said. It's just it's just maintaining Ares is important. Uh, when I get the knockback there, I do immediately try to use a skill so I do not lose uh, Ares there, and I was able to maintain it there, which was pretty nice, which helps a lot. I guess I did kind of fit into that timing there, which is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, now I just use the Nox Eterna again, but the fight is kind of basically over after this, and I just don't want to show the entire phase again, and we're already at a long video, so I'm going to skip ahead at this point. There's really not any much more to the fight anyway, it's just kind of killing him at this point after this phase is over and uh, just maintaining Ares until the very end and uh, using those abilities when they're up. So, I think that's probably going to be the main things, I can't really think of anything else that's that impactful to talk about. Maintaining Ares is important, and knowing how to get Ares back as fast as possible when you lose Ares is going to be the main keys to playing Catalina, and I hope this video was kind of able to kind of teach you the proper ways to do that and kind of understanding the best ways to do that and the best ways to maintain Ares uptime. I hope you did learn something from watching this, and if you did, please be sure to like the video, comment down below, please let me know any feedback you have on how I can improve these even further, and if you didn't like the video, you can let me know that as well. That is fine. Once again, thank you guys so much for the support, I do appreciate all of it, and as per usual, please look forward to all of my future character guides. i got about five characters left in the game, and I do plan to cover all of them, and it, well, as well as any future content that comes out for the game and all future characters. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I'll see you back here soon.